So in part one, we covered arterial and peripheral lines. Now let's talk about central lines. Well, first, what is a central line? Well, it's a catheter that provides venous access through a tip that lies either in the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, or right atrium. Now these lines gain access to the IVC, SVC, or right atrium by insertion through the right or left internal jugular vein, right or left subclavian vein, femoral vein, or arm or antecubital veins, usually the basilic. Now why use these lines? Well, you can think about the use into four categories, drugs, food, fluid, and other. So for drugs, you can use these lines for administration of irritant drugs because the large vein allows the drugs to be rapidly diluted. You can also use this for administration of vasoactive or inotropic drugs that cannot be given peripherally. Now next for food. Sometimes you'll see central lines used for TPN usually pick lines, which we'll talk about later, fluid resuscitation. And the other category includes hemodialysis or plasmapheresis. When you have poor access peripherally, or for measurement of central venous pressure. Now let's talk about the complications related to central lines. We can think about these in terms of short-term and long-term consequences. So short-term, which relate to placement, include bleeding, pneumothorax through injury of surrounding structures, or embolism, thromboembolism, gas embolism. Now one of the big complications related to long-term use is infection. Now think about it this way. The closer the line is to the SVC or right atrium, the higher the likelihood of infection. However, the trade-off is ease of placement. So in acute settings, ICUs, ORs, you're more likely to see central lines placed through the IJ or subclavian veins because these can be done through ultrasound guidance. However, they do have a higher risk of infection. PICC lines, on the other hand, have a lower risk of infection and can be placed for long-term use, but have a slightly more involved process of placement, requiring either fluoroscopic guidance or x-ray verification to make sure that the tip is in the right place. Now let's go on to other types of central lines. Now one takeoff of the central line is called the tunneled catheter, or Hickman line. Now the end result is the same as the central line as far as where the tip of the line ends. The only difference being is that the opening of the line is not in the same place where it enters the vein. Instead, the line is first tunneled through the skin. Now this greatly reduces the risk of infection since bacteria from the skin surface are not able to travel directly into the vein. These catheters are also made of materials that are resistant to infection and clotting. And you'll mainly see these used for dialysis patients. Probably one of my favorite days of third year medical school was when one of the surgeons allowed me to place one of these tunneled catheters in the OR. She had no resident, so I got to be the resident on the case. Now next are the PICC lines. These are inserted by advancing a catheter through a peripheral vein until it reaches the SVC or right atrium. Now this is done through a rough estimate of the distance from the periphery to a landmark, i.e. from the periphery to the suprasternal notch, for example. Now with PICC lines, an x-ray must be used to verify that the tip is in the right place if you're not placing these under fluoroscopy. This is not actually an easy task, as I've definitely watched a pediatrician attempt this three times and still not achieve the right placement. Now PICs have multiple lumens, which allow for multiple drugs to be administered. I didn't actually talk about multiple lumens er earlier, but what I did want to mention is that with any central line, there is room for multiple compartments, or what you'll hear of referred to as multiple lumens. This basically means that multiple medications can be delivered at once, even if they would not otherwise be chemically compatible within a single tube. 
Now, with the pick lines, these are typically used when you need IV access over a long period of time. So, for example, you'll see these used for long chemotherapy regimens, extended antibiotic therapy, or TPN. Again, in terms of infection risk, higher risk compared to just a peripheral placed IV, but lower risk than essential lines. It's not uncommon to see these have infections. I've definitely seen them on my peds rotation. So when a person spikes a fever, make sure to keep an eye on these lines. Now finally, you'll also see what's known as implantable ports. Implantable ports are basically small reservoirs that are covered with the silicon rubber that are implanted under the skin. Placement is usually done in the OR. Now these ports have a catheter which is inserted into, for example, the subclavian vein and advanced into the right atrium. Now the silicon cover can accept hundreds of needle sticks during its lifetime and saves patients from having to keep a pick line for long periods of time and otherwise run the risk of infection. These are typically done for chemotherapy regimens. Now for the take-home points. Central lines are catheters that provide venous access via the SVC or right atrium. They're used for drugs, fluids, and food. Other uses include measurements of CVP, hemodialysis, or in times of poor peripheral access. And finally, implantable ports, tunneled catheters, and pick lines are all types of central lines which are used in different situations but result in the same endpoint, access to a large vein. Thank you.